Welcome! Um, in this video, I'm going to be covering the Toy-Con Garage Mode. Um, I didn't explain that in my last video, which was, which was my submission for the, for the Toy-Con Creators Contest. So I'm going to explain how, how you can do this. It's in this Discover Mode, it's this little, this little manhole right down here. So the screen in the Discover Mode, it's just a plain black screen and it looks surprisingly dark and plain compared to the rest of the game. But um, there are lots of tutorials up here um, in the View Topic section. They explain how to do everything. Um, but instead of having you watch the videos, I'm going to explain it for you. So <clears throat> it's basically it's basically coding. You have an input, an output, and whatever thing you want in the middle. I'll explain that. Um, the Toy Con. Um, you can have any of the actions for any of the any of the builds. Um, like if in the piano, if you press the high C key, then you can have something happen. And <clears throat> in fishing, if the line is filled in, then then you can have like a, a light light up on the screen. So let's try this input. If the IR marker is seen, then here you can see that. And you, you can see that it sees the IR marker. It, it shows exactly where where it is and how it's seeing it. Um, so if the IR marker is seen, then it will vibrate. Oh, you can hear that? <clears throat> yeah, so it's just simple things like that, but you can make it a lot more complex. Um, you can change the you can change the frequency of the vibration. Let's see if you can hear this. Hold on. You can say which controller number it vibrates. Um, how long it continues after it stops seeing the IR marker? Um, which Joy-Con you want to vibrate? Um, you can change this too. Um, the analog output. Um, is is based on more based on um um how how much it's um I guess the intensity of the action. So if you're full on seeing the entire IR marker, the IR marker is taking up the entire camera, then it will gradually or gradually increase the input. When you're on digital, um just as soon as you see it see a little bit of it, then it goes all the way to the all the way to the highest intensity of the output. So here let me try this. If the control, if the right control stick is moved, then we'll play the E note. And then I'm going to set this to digital. And oh, you can, you can change the direction. Um, and oh, and you can set the range about how, how much um, how much it must be tilted. So you can see, um, no matter how, no matter how far I'm pressing it, it's it's still it's still going on the highest intensity of the E. Now, if I turn on analog, see how I can, I can kind of kind of control the volume with that. And here, um. And this is the same thing. You can change either frequency or the volume. So you can, yeah. So you can really change it up. And also, um, when you go into when you make an output any of the music notes, um, it's a lot more dynamic than the actual piano because, um, you can you can choose any of the sharp notes. You can change any type of sound you want. You can change the octave. That doesn't sound like a guitar anymore. But and you can make um here, I'll now show you the middle option. And means that you need two two or more inputs um to activate something. So if a control stick is moved. Now let's try this. If both control sticks are moved, only then we'll make the E note. Oh, 
Oh, and you can you can change it up and make it make two two different inputs able to work. Attach the wrist strap first. Um. So you can either do this or you can shake this, sh shake this while holding the joystick. Now you hear that. That's analog, so it's based on how hard you're shaking it. And since shaking it isn't even, um, it's the sound's gonna get really whacked if you do that. And so you can really do a lot of dynamic, dynamic things. And look, your your board for each program is really really big, and you can increase the size of each of each node if you want. Um, and for files, you get um, you get seven seven files, so um, you can really really make a lot. And I'll see some more inputs. Yeah, just basic inputs. If touched, I'll try this one. If if touched, the rest are just pressing the buttons. That's that's what you saw in my ocarina video. Um, so if touched, then. There you can do that. Um, let's try more of the middle, the middle nodes. Not then. Now not is is the opposite of and. So. So when the, so this actually turns off an input. So when this button, so when you're you're not touching this button, then F will play. But if you are touching it, then it'll stop playing. Let's try another one. The timer. That's um that's pretty self-explanatory. Just how long after you do something will the input last? And if you don't want it to play that for a quick little bit, you can make it ring out by continue for how long. And The counter is how many how many times you do something. The range must be pressed it must be pressed nine times in order to for it to play the F note. Oh, I almost forgot. Um there are three different nodes here. Um three different inputs here. Um the, this this one is a plus one. This increases the amount of times. This one decreases the amount of times. Here, I'll, I'll show you this. Okay, this increases the amount of times on the counter, and this decreases the amount of times. This increases, this decreases, and this resets it to zero, no matter what it is. So see, I can put it to nine times. Oh, I, I forgot. I have it set to. I have it set. I have it set to change volume instead of change frequency. So. So I have to press it more to make it louder. And I can de decrease the volume here, and I can reset it right here. But I have it continuing for a while, so it's not going to stop right away. Also, this one's a. This one's a little bit confusing. The bullseye. Um, this works with the output light up screen. So when the screen lights up, um, after after an input activates it, then here I'll show you. Um, for, yeah, so you can make it. So you have to press. You can press any button. Um, you can just press a few buttons, or you can press any one button even pressing in the actual joystick. So when this joystick is pressed, then it lights up and it fills part of the bullseye. So let's make it... Let's make it make a sound.
Hear that change volume? Listen to this. When I make another input, that's the other the other joystick button being pressed. And I make another light for that. But I split it across the screen so so it only so when you press one it only half lights up the bullseye. Here, so I have my um, my right joystick here, if you press it, then this one lights up. And your left joystick, if you press it, then this one lights up. But if you press them both at the same time. Hear, that, hear how I can increase the volume like that? If only, only if both of them are pressed, that's what the bullseye is used for. And the last one is just comments. It's basically just typing any notes that you need. This one, I don't think you can attach any inputs or outputs to it, but it's just useful in case you want to give yourself instructions on how you made your own Joy-Con. Toy-Con, I mean. So that, that pretty much sums up the, the Toy-Con Garage Mode, but I didn't go into the very, very complex things about it. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos on Nintendo Labo and the Toy-Con Garage Mode.